you change your shirt, Mr. Bond. I hope our little Gabe isn't causing you to perspire. Oh dear me, I'm so sorry. The Volkswagen ID3, it's supposed to be the first in a new generation of electric cars. It has nine different trim levels and five different powertrain options. But is it any good? Should you care? Why, let's find out, shall we? Volkswagen, Los Gates. Here we are with anxious time us to what we're called home Even if the sight of it has not yet touched our eyes And here we are and we're together Even if we are apart And we're together when we're together Something big is happening So welcome to rather a uh, rainy episode of Tweet Jacket Reviews This is a 2021 Volkswagen ID3 Pro Performance Family. Very kindly lent to the channel by uh, Miss Jackson Senior, who is the father of Mr. Jackson Junior, who you would have seen in the uh, ZSEV and uh, BMW i3 reviews. So thanks, Mr. Jackson. Faxton. Before I get into more detail about the Volkswagen ID3, please take a moment to like this video to leave a comment below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. It really does help us to rank higher on YouTube and to spread the love of tweed jackets all over the internet. So the ID3, in this country at least, was launched about just over six months ago. It's really not been out very long at all. And it's a very, very, very refreshing change from a lot of stuff I have been driving recently on the channel to again drive an electric car. This car has been a long time coming um, as, as far as Volkswagen is concerned and they have actually named it as their sort of third generation of basic car model. You know, the, the classic Beetle was the first, then the Golf uh, from 1974 and now this. And there's really not much, as, as far as I can see, that's too much in common with their combustion models. I mean, sure, some of this infotainment system's a bit similar, and this touch panel here, and generally the feeling of um, sort of uh, the quality in here, although there are some hard plastics. But just generally the way it drives, actually, the way it drives is, is remarkably easy because you know, it's electric for a start, and also, you know, they, they want people to move away from combustion engines, um, particularly in this country. And also after the Dieselgate scandal, they'll want um, to put that behind them. And I think with this car, they've really achieved that. There's really not much in common with this and say an old diesel Passat estate. Just driving this car on the roads uh, around Hatfield and St Albans, we'll go down the North Orbital Road in a bit. It um, feels very composed. The motor's actually in the back and not in the front, although there's not room for a, a, a fruit front boot or frunk as some people call them. But that's not too bad. The, the load capacity for a car that's got the motor in the back is actually quite good. We'll look at that in a little bit. So I've got the car in, uh, in the B mode. There is a D and a B mode. The B mode increases the regenerative braking, although there is no separate regenerative um, switch like there would be in something like an MG ZSCV. It's not quite one pedal driving, the regen isn't actually that fierce in this car. I'm going to have to use the brake just now just to stop it at these lights. And the auto hold has just come on as well. You can disable that of course by filling around with some of the menus. I do like the silence of driving electric cars and also knowing that the power source that I'm using is a lot cheaper than any sort of fuel, be it um, petrol or the forbidden fuel, because we don't talk about diesels on this channel. So 
the basic um, ID3 that you can get at the moment, this is um, May 2021 we're recording this, uh, is there's the City. Now that comes with the base powertrain, which is known as the pure performance powertrain at the moment. There is a pure, which I think is, is, is coming at some point. So the City model comes with a uh, 45 kilowatt hour battery and the most generates 145 brake horsepower. That's the pure performance powertrain. It does get a bit confusing because there are five different powertrains and we don't get the base powertrain in this country at the moment. What we do get though is uh, the next one up is called the Pro powertrain. Uh, that also has 145 brake horsepower. Uh, but it has a much, much larger battery of 58 kilowatt hours. And uh, that enables you on the WTP cycle uh, to go about 260 miles. It, re it really depends actually um, on what wheels and tires you specify in your given trim level. Next one up is actually this. This is the Pro uh, Performance and this has 201 brake horsepower, that same 58 kilowatt hour battery. 0 to 60 in this car is, is, is really fast, it's about 7.3 seconds and uh, being on a normal orbital road now with a bit of um, a 70 mile an hour speed limit here we might be able to test that shortly. Certainly I'm very familiar um, with driving electric cars by now, the first one I drove was about four years ago and compared with the normal petrol car that I drive every single day, it just feels really, really easy. Just don't have to worry about gears or anything, single speed drive, really no problem. And with some, a bit of regen braking, although I, I personally would like a bit more, I still have to use um, the uh, brake pedal to come to a complete stop. It, um, it, it is just the easiest thing ever. You know, the control system, anything like the infotainment system, is a bit confusing, um, if, if, if I'm honest, although I'm sure you get used to it after a while, we'll go into more about that later. But let's um, go from 50 to 70. Oh my goodness me, Mr. Jackson. Mr. Jackson is in the back um, on the left hand side. Um, obviously, we are practicing a bit of social distancing, but he's just sort of here to check my facts and stuff. Um, it is rapid. There's no two bones about it. This is rapid. Here we go, long north orbital road, and it wants to go faster. Now, I'm doing 70. The top speed of the car is only 99 miles an hour. Uh, that is for all ID3s. They're capped at 99 miles an hour, which I think is 160 um, kmh, something like that. But yeah, it's 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 really quite compliant on the ride as well. I wouldn't wouldn't expect it to be so compliant on the ride. Let's just go around this corner and see how it handles. So the engine's in the back, not the motor is in the back. I keep saying engine, why shouldn't be? Yeah, that that feels nice and nice and stable. It feels very stable. And it's also a lot of fun. I, I do, I do like this. And we're coming up to a roundabout now, so I've lifted my foot off off the accelerator, and it's gradually slowing a little bit for me, which is fantastic. At the top of the range, there is the Pro S drivetrain as well. The Pro S drivetrain gives you the same power output as this Pro Performance, which is about 201 brake horsepower, but it's a 77 kilowatt hour battery, so much, much more range. Um, figures this is about 260, depending on what wheels you choose. The WLTP range for the uh, Pro S is 336 miles, a huge, huge improvement. Now, you're not going to get the stated figures, unfortunately. That's um, not a fabrication exactly, but those in ideal driving conditions. And today, it's <laughs> weather's really bad. I mean, later on in review, we had to sort of change our camera position because it was getting so poor. But you probably go in one of in one of these going to get say 210 miles in the pro performance like this and the pro S, maybe 300. I don't know. Have to see on a sort of longer term test. 
Now the trim levels available in this in this car are very very confusing. There's nine of them in total. Uh, starts off with the City, which is the bottom of the range. That's only available with the pure performance drivetrain. And then there is the Style. There is the Life, the Family, the Business, the Tech. Then there's Max, and the top of the range is Tour. The only trim level available with the Pro S um, powertrain is the is the Tour. And uh, at the beginning of this car's production in this country, um, well, the cars just telling me not to turn to the lane. I definitely am. Don't complain at me. Um, so yes, yeah, so right at the right of the top with the tour, you can only get it with Prowess drivetrain. The first edition was, I think, similar to the Max, really. That uh, came with the, perform the uh, Pro Performance powertrain like this. And to be honest, I think the Pro and the Pro Performance are probably going to be the most common models. The Pure drivetrain will be arriving, I think, quite soon in this country. Um, it's not available at the moment. But I'm, I'm really enjoying this. I, I'm sort of now forgetting the initial gripes that I had the first time I saw this car when I did the walk around that you probably would have seen on the channel and trying to get to grips with this entertainment system, which I, I find a little bit confusing. And we'll go into more of depth about that later. But just generally driving it and just putting it into B or D for two drive modes. And also there is a, um, things like a, there is another drive mode selector here. That you can have, we can have the eco, um, can have comfort, sport, and individual as well, just like in the, you know, something like a Skoda Octavia, Volkswagen Golf, something like that. So, I, I could go even faster than, than this, but I, I don't really need to because I've just got this instant response from this powertrain, just no problem. Just going around that Park Street roundabout back there, which is uh. Uh, actually, the, <laughs> the roundabout that used to feature on the cover of the Highway Code for all you kind of, uh, you know, um, motoring geeks out there, and obviously I'm one of them. It's just a bit of a, a glimpse of the future. Obviously, you know, the government's now said that it's not going to be possible to buy a conventionally fuelled car in this country, brand new, from 2030. The only ones that will be available would be pure electric cars like this. And then of course there's some plug-in hybrids, but that's about it. And uh, you know, Volkswagen have really prepared themselves for this. This, this car is going to uh, have a lot of different platform stable mates, things like the ID Buzz, uh, the ID4 that's just come out. There's going to be a lot more of them. And also with a Ford who are going to be sharing this platform. They have also said they're going to bring out a number of models too. Prices of this, of this uh, car start at about £30,000. There was, were 28 or thereabouts, but the thing was in April, the government decided to reduce the plug-in car grant down to £2,500. And also, that was capped at £35,000. So with an ID3, if you buy one now, and I have checked on the Volkswagen website, the list price of the base city model with the pure performance drivetrain is just over £30,000. And only three of the trim levels are actually under £35,000. And so the price of the top tour model of the Pro S drivetrain is now north of about £42,000, which I think is possibly a bit steep for this type of car. One has to remember with something like a, a Tesla Model 3, that's actually not that more expensive than one of these at the top end. Now, Tesla might drive better than this. I haven't driven one, so I wouldn't be able to say. But I think maybe stick at the lower end of the, lower end of the range and you probably get a bit better value for money. I've actually just activated the uh, adaptive cruise control system which has a travel assist feature and I can feel the car's brake pedal pulsating because I've got a white van in front of me and it's actually braking so I don't hit the white van in front but also accelerating as it goes further. 
I have never driven a car with this feature before and it's just stopped for me. I, I, I was able to see the van, I would have stopped anyway and I can feel the pedal moving but it's just it's just really really quite relaxing. I don't, I'm not doing anything, I've got to keep my hands on the wheel otherwise it will probably turn off but I'm not stopping or starting, I'm not touching the accelerator, just holding my foot over the brake in case I've got to take over but it's actually quite quite useful. I mean the traffic on on this particular road is, is a little bit heavy so if you're going to work or something this is this is really quite something. Um, I'm not sure it would work particularly well if you had a clutch and a petrol engine and a manual gearbox but in an electric car like this it's pretty good. So the efficiency of an ID3 with this powertrain the Pro Performance powertrain and the 58 kilowatt hour battery is measured on the WLTP cycle at 4.2 miles per kilowatt hour. Now typically I don't think it's going to be anywhere near that, um, particularly in weather like this. So maybe three if you're sort of careful you don't drive like a madman but the temptation is with this with this car is to drive very very fast because the acceleration is really really quick. Now on the base pure performance one that you can get in this country, Nord 60 is about 9.6 seconds I think. Um, on the Pro it is 8.9 seconds, on this it's 7.3 but for some reason on a Pro S that goes up to 7.9 but here we go again accelerating 50 to 70 and really I'm not even touching the throttle very much and we're already we're already there already there just remarkably easy remarkably quick and also quite a lot of fun holds the line through the corner nicely um, I don't know if I would particularly feel at the moment whether this is front wheel drive or rear wheel drive I wouldn't particularly know that but it, but I suppose if you drove this like an absolute lunatic you'd soon find out. So I've had my fun on the North Orbital Road I think it's time we uh, parked up and looked at the interior of this car in a bit more detail. Because this is an electric car with an electronic handbrake, I can't dramatically pull the handbrake on when I've come back from a test drive. Um, so yes, I've, I've just done what I can do with the switch and that was, that was fun. It's quite fast, it's got rear wheel drive, just not in the way that perhaps you expect it to be. Anyway, let's take a look at the ID3's more practical side and take a look at the boot. walk down the side of this car we'll see we've got these rather large alloy wheels and that does actually affect the fuel efficiency rather the electricity efficiency because uh, different wheels give you different mileage. If we open up the boot using this trademark Volkswagen badge this particular one has a reversing camera and it's just housed in here the first thing you'll notice actually is the rear window is really really small so you are going to need that reversing camera and the parking sensors when you're manoeuvring. This particular model has an adjustable height boot floor. If you have this in the lower position there's 385 litres of space. It's about 5 litres more than a Golf Mark 8. If I fold this back like this and then fold this bit down here you can see there is a little compartment there for storing say a uh, three pin granny lead although you don't get one as standard in this car some dealers might give you one but this only has a type 2 in the boot one thing I'm, I'm pleased to see on <laughs> so many other cars I review is the fact we've got 12 volt socket in here we've got proper hooks for holding the shopping bags and an LED boot light also it, in the side compartments here you, you can um, put things upright I would think that would be an ideal place for a warning triangle but Volkswagen have already actually came up with a place which is just up here uh, you can also follow rear seats but we'll do that in a second one thing I'm slightly concerned about is just the 
feel and weight of this parcel shelf. It looks a little bit light to me, but maybe it'll be fine. One of the best attributes of an ID3 is the amount of space in the back. So I'm 5 foot 11 and this is my driving position. I've got absolutely loads and loads of knee room. Headroom, for some reason, with this uh, model of the panoramic roof isn't particularly good, but it's perfectly comfortable in here. I could slouch a bit if I wanted to as well. The mix of materials is very interesting in here. I think this is like a fake leather or vinyl on the back of the seats. And this material on the seats here is a mixture of kind of suede or Alcantara uh, vinyl. And I don't even know what this is here, something. Um, that presumably is, if you've got a child and they're constantly spilling stuff on there, it's easier to clean it, I'm not sure. Also on here, we've got hinged Isofix covers, which is a huge improvement on the Mark 7.5 Golf I filmed two years ago, because those just fell off. But these do not, they're fixed in place, which is brilliant. That's uh, something Volkswagen have clearly learned over the last um, couple of years. The door cards on here are quite hard at the top. They're not, they're not bad quality, but just a bit hard, which is a surprise decision. But then again, the Mark 7 Half Golf was like that, but that's not a surprise, perhaps. The uh, piano black trim is here, of course, that might get scratched a bit because you're pulling on that quite a lot. Uh, there is this sort of vinyl here as well. The um, door bins are actually very big, they're quite large in this car. And so is this centre armrest, which has a ski hatch as well. You can open that up if you need to, or close it like that, it's not particularly difficult. It's quite comfortable and there are some cup holders in here. This middle one, I don't know what that's for, maybe a very small energy drink, and these are rubber lined as well, so you, uh, the things don't move. Another thing as well is that it does have two USB ports down here, which is brilliant, but they're not USB normal, they're USB-C, and so you need an adapter to use them, which I would find quite annoying if this was my car. It's really quite comfortable and spacious in the front of this car as well. And there's all sorts of different um, storage for all sorts of bits and pieces. I mean, I've got my, got my lunch here that fits in the centre console very nicely. I've got more lunch here as well for the centre console. Um, the secret mission documents, which are here, they don't actually go in the glove box, which is a bit of a pain. I mean, you can try to fit them in like that. They either fall out or they just don't go in. I mean, that's a, that's a bit of a disappointment, but there we are, they, they did just drop in here. We've also got an area specifically for smartphones. There, there is actually wireless charging in quite a few of the models of the ID3 range. And uh, there's a bit here that you can actually just move forward to pull your phone, it makes pulling your phone out a bit easier. Uh, this car, after the update for the software, does have wireless Android Auto, which is really good. And um, the panoramic roof does make filming and things like that a little bit easier. One thing I am aware of though is this is a, it's a stop, stop button here, which is like my old set Toledo was, but it doesn't seem to work particularly as you'd expect. It, it's far easier just to sort of twiddle this gear lever to get the car to sort of show you things on the screen, which is a bit strange, but uh, you know, that's just the way it is. Something that a lot of newer Volkswagen Group models have is this slider here, touch slider, for using the um, heated and ventilation controls. And one of the things we'll do is we'll put it into climatic. Again, it, it, it's a touch button. It, I, I think that really should be a physical button, but that's just the way it seems to be going in the car industry these days. And we can uh, increase or decrease the temperature with this. There is a little bit of uh, haptic feedback and there is a bit of noise to tell you you've done something. And it, it's, it's okay, but if I see here on the main screen a button for turning on the, le the heated seats, I would expect that not to put me through into a sub menu, which is what it seems to be doing, which is a bit annoying. Also annoying is, is this light panel here for turning on, for example, the um, heated rear window or the maximum defrost setting. I mean, you can fiddle with this all you sort of want. It, it works when you don't want it to. It doesn't work when you want it to. And the automatic lights and things like that are down here and it, it just doesn't need to be a touch panel it really should just be a physical switch like I don't know they've been putting in golfs and everything else for years the infotainment system um, is 
interesting. It's got a lot of different functions on it, an awful lot of different functions on it, and just sort of constantly sort of moving around to try to make it work. I mean, one of the things you can do quite easily is change the driving mode. That's not a, that's not a problem, really. You can make it do that quite easily. So if we press that button here, we've got Eco, Comfort, Sport, Individual, rather like, I don't know, Skoda Octavia, something like that. Not that difficult to understand. Um, but if you want to, for example, turn off the heated steering wheel, you have to go into sort of loads and loads of sub-menus, and for some reason, it comes on automatically. Well, whatever's going on, that's the default. It's actually automatic, which I think is a bizarre choice, but there it is. It is a, a 10.1 inch screen. As I said, it, it does have wireless Android Auto and normal Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Um, it's reasonably easy once you're used to it to get around and sort of work out what's going on, and you can turn it off entirely by using that button there, um, if you think it's a bit distracting. Um, we can put it in online mode there. We've got all kinds of things here. We can look for charging locations. Um, we can see the status of the car. We can play around with all kinds of different things. And it, it looks very swish, but I can't help thinking that just to find something really basic, like um, a control for turning on and off blind spot monitoring or something like that, you'd have to spend a week studying the instruction manual or some videos online. As I mentioned before, the rear window in this car is really, really small, and the C pillars are really, really thick. So, if you want to reverse, I mean, you are really going to have to use a camera. You really are going to have to use that camera because it's it's going to be impossible to really see otherwise. Just as well, this this car does have one. Also, getting used to the fact that there really isn't a conventional handbrake in here. There is an electronic handbrake and it has an auto hold function like in many electric cars but there's no separate release for it anywhere you'd have to sort of fiddle around in the menus to get that auto hold feature turned off uh, forward visibility is pretty good you can't see the front of the car really at all but it has got all round parking centers on this uh, specification which is good uh, automatic light automatic wipers of course but one really strange thing apart from the fact that the <laughs> There's no um, separate controls for the electric rear windows. You have to press this touch button which says rear, which doesn't work half the time, and then use the same controls as the front electric windows in order to actually access them, which is a real pain. We've had we're doing filming today and weather not being the best. We've, had, we've been fiddling around with this a lot, and it is a right pain trying to get that correct. We've uh, just moved the camera a little bit to get out of the uh, hailstorm which has suddenly appeared while we're filming. But it does give you a chance to actually show you this big screen and all the different features on it. Um, we've got sort of things like vehicle status, charging status, 93% in this car at the moment, and the data. And you can see ex exactly, the. for some reason we've got um, eco on this half of the climate control at 21 degrees on this. If I press the assist button, having actually put the car under drive mode, we can see we've got all the different safety systems in here. We've got uh, a thing called traveling assist for protecting the model, uh, blind spot monitoring. Uh, we've also got tons of emergency braking, of course, uh, lane keeping assist too. And it's very clear to sort of do, although I have to actually press that button there to work out what to do. You can see all kinds of different things, speed limiter, driver alert system, um, the front assist as well is there. And we can go into uh, the climate controls from here as well. And we can have different types of <laughs> climate control displays. We can have the smart climate, the classic climate, which is probably what I would think of when I'm looking at climate controls. And then there's a system of air purification as well, uh, which says the door is open because because it is. So if we go back to the main menu here, um, for some reason it gives me a uh, reversing camera. I'm not particularly sure why it's doing that. Um, one of the things about this system is, which I would really prefer, is if we actually had um, fewer of these icons that are the same color. Yes. So this is the main screen, and if I move down, you can see we've got things like App Connect. And now if we had Android Auto um, wirelessly connected, that, that we where it is. We've also got Apple CarPlay um, and normal Android Auto using the USB-C port to the bottom. We should be able to also move this way, finally. Um, and that just shows a little, little map where we are. You can make that map a little bit bigger if you want. And uh, you know, there's the telephone things, vehicle. There's all sorts of different things you can do. And then we've got different um, 
statuses of the car. Now, this car is supposed to do 4.2 um, miles per kilowatt hour. I've heard a lot of people say it doesn't really do that, um, that it's, the, the consumption is a little bit worse. Um, obviously, when we get on the roads, um, when it's uh, sort of sort of um, isn't raining so hard, we'll have to have a look at that. But um, you can see it's sort of going going down now. I I would prefer just to put this into Android Auto personally. I'm much more familiar with it than this, and I don't understand why all the icons have to be the same colour as well. You can move them around, but this isn't my car. This is Mr. Jackson's father's car, so um, I will not be doing that. But uh, yes, it's it's an intriguing system. I mean, if you spend a couple of hours with this, you're going to get very familiar with it. But um, Personally, I don't really like having to read a massive handbook just to go for a quick drive in a car. One of the things you can do um, in this in this car is to move the steering wheel up and down like this, and the instruments actually move with the steering wheel, which I think is a really good feature. That's quite handy. Lock that and that. Now, in order to, to just drive off, you don't touch the stop-start button here. You actually just put it into into drive, which I will do like this. And we've got auto hold feature, which is just on there. And the car would just now move. You just have to push the accelerator a little bit and then the car will, will move off. It's not quite as you'd expect, actually, if you're not familiar with this sort of car. We can make the view of this section here a little bit bigger by uh, just pressing this button here. That's a view of the road and things. I don't think there's too much else you can actually have on this on this screen. I have tried. These are the cruise control controls on here. They're actually quite conventional compared to the rest of the car. Um, and uh, and and also it's a digital readout on here. There's no uh, you know conventional dials that would be on a MG Zeta CV something like that. It has got automatic lights and wipers, although it doesn't show also on here. And the steering wheel does feel quite nice to hold. It is a D cut wheel. Uh, it does. I think remind me of one out of the of the market golf. I think they're very similar. Um, overall, you do have to spend a long time familiarising yourself with this. And uh, Mr. Jackson, who is with us as his father's car, um, has reminded me that there actually is no handbook with this car at all. There's no paper handbook. You have to enter your VIN online and read it from there. Uh, that's probably why I'm so confused because I can't refer to the handbook at all. In conclusion, what do I think of the Volkswagen ID3? Despite Volkswagen's claim that this will be an easy electric car for the masses, I'm not so sure that it is yet. The infotainment system does still need a little bit of work, although it is very impressive how many features it has. The most impressive thing actually about this car, particularly in this pro performance guys, is the way that it drives. And that might sell it to quite a few people. Oh dear me, I'm so sorry. That last hand nearly killed me. Thank you for watching this episode of True Jacket Reviews. I source cars for people on a professional basis. To find out more, please visit the links in the description below. Thank you.